You know, it's funny, even after driving cars for the best part of 25 years, I still get excited about the prospect of driving a nice big top of the range saloon car, whether it be a BMW, Mercedes. They are just such a pleasant experience. You know, and I always think that's what driving's all about. It's not just about economy and getting from A to B, although in many cases it does have to be. It's about pleasure. If you can involve pleasure in your day-to-day -day drive of a vehicle, it really can be a remarkable experience. Now let's take this Mercedes for example. It's by no means the top of the range car. But driving it is like it's like riding a magic carpet. The car is just floating down this road effortlessly. It is comfortable. I am not being chucked around on the corners. It feels like there's power there if you needed it to maybe overtake a roundabout, uh, overtake a roundabout, overtake a lorry on the motorway or maybe pulling out at a roundabout so their car comes around need to accelerate out the way it feels like the power is there it feels secure it doesn't feel like a bully car it feels like if I did have a prang in this car I've got a good chance of survival I don't feel as vulnerable as I would do in other vehicles it seems to tick all the boxes in comfort this is a vehicle which one could very easily drive across another country in this you know it's built to house the driver it's not like other cars which aren't built to house the driver they're just built to get you from A to B and oh we'll make a little room for the driver to sit in this vehicle isn't like that this is your space this is your road got every conceivable extra you'd want except for a, a stewardess you know now the first thing that does spring to my mind is the the wing mirrors on this car they are quite narrow actually I mean when you consider the overall size of this vehicle why are the why are the mirrors so stingy there's a lot more going on around me which I'd be able to pick up if the mirrors were larger the rear vision is obstructed by the headrests although by no means completely but you know this is a Mercedes it's a sophisticated of a motor car why are the headrests there you know there's no one sitting in the back so the headrest should disappear that's not hard to do the actual uh, dashboard is one of the most simplest I've ever seen to read and I'll tell you why these these illuminated ones seem to come up because the only information that you need is illuminated you're not distracted by the silver paint around a dial or the shadow a, a tunnel or a tube bomb would, would create the information is illuminated there you look down you read it bang your concentration is still on the road the centre console well it's actually very cleverly designed because what parts are to do with say the heating or the screen or the radio are all kept separate so it's not like a mass of knobs with a black background there's your navigation there's your volume etc 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 there's your temperature control you know you don't have to search in between you know which one's which they're simplistic a few buttons for each one that's all you need to do very clever design able to get a lot of features in there but keep it very elementary and easy to operate while you're driving even putting these buttons up here clever idea you know keep everything separate but within a, within range the finish of the vehicle well you know this artificial wood thing never ticks my box I don't suppose it's realistic to keep real wood in a car with the temperature going up and down and what have you and the variation of the climate but it just in some cars it's well it's just so cheap and awful it's depressing I have to admit though that's plastic you can't kid anybody with it so what's the point of making a bit of plastic look like a piece of wood I think that's a flunk to be fair 
don't like that at all. Now the gear transition on this vehicle is really second to none. I mean, it's almost like a warp drive. You just the power is there. It's just effortless. I'm not even aware of the gear change really, except for a slight change in the tone that I'm hearing from the engine. It's it's so much. It's so cleverly done. It's so subtly done that your attention is not on it at all. You drive many cars, and you can hear the the gear change taking place over and over and over again, and you're constantly focusing on it. Not that you want to. It's just your attention gets hooked onto it. The good thing about this is not only more luxurious and more comfortable, more enjoyable to drive. It means you've got more attention on driving the vehicle. So you know. It's not only pleasant, it's clever. Now the brakes on this vehicle, I would say, are pretty damn good. They're a little bit grabby, and I must admit, yeah, they are They are very grabby, even at slow speed, which is quite remarkable for a Mercedes. And it does feel like it's pulling in an uneasy fashion. I think that's probably got to do with the size of this car, because this is a very long car but I can't say I was 100% satisfied with the braking of this vehicle. If you're going to test drive on these vehicles, I would say that's one particular area that I would recommend you look at. There's obviously not going to be anything wrong with the braking on a Mercedes, but I find it's going to take a bit of getting used to that one. As I say, the transition through the gears is just fantastic. No noise at all. No, no, I'm not aware of any change really, apart from the tone of the engine and the increase in the the wind resistance on the car, which is minimalistic. There's not a lot of noise coming out of the car. It's a beautiful ride. Now the car does boat about. The steering is not responsive. I can move this steering wheel that far before the vehicle actually starts to move. That's not a good sign. And it's very floaty, very boaty. Look, a car this size is going to be designed to be a smooth ride. But I think if I had to swerve out of a motorway lane at speed in this vehicle, I could get into a lot of trouble very quickly because the car will counter effect the swerve with a soft suspension and it will bolt you back and you'll end up boating and swerving and snaking and it often feels like the car's articulated so I'm not happy about the soft suspension but you've got to have a compromise with a vehicle like this you want a soft ride, you want people to be comfortable in the back but I don't know, I personally would like to see firmer shocks on this car but to really summarise, you know, this is a wonderful drive, and it's even though it's not the fastest and most powerful Mercedes, I could drive this car all day long, and I tell you what, I get out feeling as fresh as I got in it. It's Mercedes. What more can I say? You know, it's about as good as it gets, really. But if you're going to take one of these for a test drive, have a look at the steering and have a look at the brakes because I think that's probably where you're going to get some issues on a second-hand vehicle.